everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, be sure that you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. That way you don't miss out on any of the fun crafty content we have coming. In today's video, we are going to make a really fun shadow box. We're going to be using some rolled paper flowers, vinyl, and some glitter cardstock to create this really cool flower Winnie the Pooh box. I'm going to show you how to cut out your flowers, size everything, and apply everything together. Plus, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks to rolling paper flowers. So let's go ahead and get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. We're gonna be using these rolled paper flowers SVG, and I'm gonna use this rounded one here because I prefer the look of that one for the design that we're doing. But what I'm gonna do is click download. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save these into my paper crafting folder. So I just need to find that paper crafts and you can change the name if you want to. I'm just gonna go ahead and just get rid of the numbers cause I don't need them and click save. Now it's important to note that the files that you download are zipped folders, so you'll need to extract them. So what we're gonna do is open up the folder and there's gonna be an extract all option and it might take a second to open. Sometimes they do if they're a little bit larger. And all you have to do is click extract all and then just simply click extract. It's very simple, super quick, super easy. Now I wanna go ahead and just close this folder that says extract at the top because we're just gonna drag and drop our flowers in. So let's open this up and take a look at what these look like. So you can see that you have kind of a couple of different files here. Now I never use a DXF or the EPS full like files, so I'm gonna delete those right away. Then what I'm gonna do is I wanna just look at what they look like in this PNG, just so we can see kind of the different options that they show. So you can see you get a couple different options and I'm gonna show you how to upload these to Design Space. Head over to your Cricut Design Space and you're going to click Upload right here on the left-hand side. Choose Upload Image and then click on the word Browse and you can look for your file, but that takes a while. So what I like to do is I leave that folder open and then I can simply drag and drop my SVG. Now you may see that nothing is listed as an SVG in my folder because I've never actually selected a default vector program for mine. So they just open as an HTML document, but this right here is the SVG. And if your computer does that, it's totally normal. Just go ahead and drag and drop that SVG. Now the way this one is set up, you get all the pieces in one SVG, but we'll delete the ones that we don't wanna use. So I'm gonna click on upload and it's simply just gonna upload it. Very easy to do with SVGs because they're already set up. Select the design that you wanna use and add it to your canvas. Now, all we need to do from here is to ungroup our design because right now it is grouped and I wanna delete the little green uh, teardrops. I wanna delete the orange one and the purple one because we only wanna use the pink one. So to ungroup, go to the top of your layers panel and you'll see these two squares. That is your ungroup option, so go ahead and click on that. Now what you'll see is you have each little like individual kind of piece together. So we can just delete these parts that we don't wanna use. Go ahead and click delete. And we're left with our flower right here. Super easy to do, really simple, and I really like working with the SVGs when they're set up like that because it's so much easier to just eliminate what you don't wanna use. We wanna size the flowers so that they fit within our shadow box. And if you haven't watched it yet, you should watch the video that I have from a couple days ago about flower sizing and the different sizes they come out depending on how large you make them. For this, I'm gonna use three inch, four inch, and five inch flowers. So what I'm gonna do is I am first going to duplicate this three times. That way I have three flowers and I can do each of them individual sizes. Now you'll notice that I accidentally grabbed the edge of that bounding box and do you see how it changes the scale? We don't wanna do that so if that ever happens to you, just let go of it and click on do and it will take your flower back to its original shape. Now what I wanna do, like I said, I wanna do three inch, four inch and five inch, meaning that I want my width to be that exact size. So I'm gonna change my width to three inches not 0.1, I don't know why it did that, that's that's different. Um, three inches, and then I wanna do the next one at four inches, and I'm gonna do this last one at five inches. Now we're gonna be cutting multiples of this flower, so don't worry, really easy. We're just gonna kinda tuck these over to the side for now, 
and kind of scooch them over because we don't need them and they're going to be in our way for our next part. Now we need to upload our Winnie the Pooh that we're going to use as a little outline and his little t-shirt. So what I'm going to do is click upload and upload image and then I'm going to browse for the design that I want to use. So I know that the design I want to use is in my Cricut folder. It is under my Disney designs and then it is under my coloring pages and I'm going to use this Winnie the Pooh. He's pretty simple, but we're going to kind of jazz him up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is click complex and continue. Now from here, you want to remove all of the white parts from him, but I like to use the advanced settings just to make sure I get nice clean lines. So what I do is click under more options. I leave the reduced colors to unmodified and then I change this to 100. That's the color tolerance. And then all I want to do is click and remove any white pieces of the Winnie the Pooh. So you just want to make sure that you're getting rid of all of the sections that are white and you're only leaving his outline. Once you've got all the white gone, go ahead and click apply and continue. Now you're going to see two different versions of your outline. You have this one, which is our cut image, and then you also have a print to the cut image. And what a lot of people think is that their cut image is going to be really blobby and messy because it looks not nearly as clean as your print and cut image. And the reason that it looks like that is because this cut image shows you the cut lines that Cricut will follow, which does add some thickness to your lines, but it will cut looking like this. Now go ahead and select that cut image. That's the one we want and choose upload. Once it's in your uploaded items, go ahead and select it and add it to your canvas. Now he's a little bit big. I want to make him a little smaller for now so we can see him a little bit better. Now we're going to need three versions of this Winnie the Pooh. We're going to need one that's his outline. We're going to need one that's just his t-shirt. And then we're going to need one that is a solid version of him that we're going to cut on cardstock. So I'm going to duplicate him twice, leaving us with three Winnie the Poohs. I'm just going to kind of separate them. So the first one we'll start with is this one and we're going to create his t-shirt. So I'm going to go to contour down here in the lower right hand corner. What I want to do is I want him to turn into a negative image really quick. So you click where you can see how he turns kind of dark gray. If I click like that, I can turn him into a negative image. Then I want to get rid of all of the parts that we don't want by clicking on each of those parts. And you'll notice that with his face, his nose and his little eyes and the smile and his little chin all show up. We want to get rid of those parts because we don't want them. We only want to keep his t-shirt. Now, if you've got a little part here that's a little hard to select, you can sometimes find it over in this panel. So if you click on the images in this panel, you'll see that it gets rid of them over here as well. So you can kind of play around and figure out which way works best for you. But like I said, we only want to keep the part that is his t-shirt. Once I've just got the t-shirt isolated, I'm going to select the color and just change it to red so that we know that that's going to be his red shirt. And now you can see that it will fit within those lines. But I hate trying to line up things that have really teeny tiny lines and it will just be a lot easier if we make his shirt section fully colored in. So we're gonna just fill his shirt in. That way of layering, you're layering on a solid piece. So I'm gonna just use this Winnie the Pooh and all I'm gonna do is contour so that his t-shirt parts are filled in. So this is a really quick one. That's all you have to do. Just get rid of his t-shirt parts, just fill them in. And now if I send him backwards, so you can see now his t-shirt still looks the same, but it's going to be easier when it comes to layering. Now this one's really easy to do because we just need a solid version of our Winnie the Pooh. So I'm just going to click hide all contours and you'll see that it becomes a solid version of Winnie the Pooh. Now, one thing I will tell you is if you're going to resize, you want to make sure you resize everything together. So what I'm going to do is I want to get everybody lined up together and we'll resize it all at the same time. I'm using a nine by nine shadow box from Michaels and the actual area of the shadow box that's viewable is a little under eight and a half inches. So I like to make him about, I like to do maybe like about eight tall. So keep that in mind when you are um, doing this, you'll want to measure your frame of the actual viewable area. So he's ready to go and you'll see that you have this three parts. So we're going to cut the outline and the shirt in vinyl and then this part will be cardstock. So I'm going to change the color of him and we're going to do one thing to make life a little bit easier. Because I need to cut multiple copies of the flowers, 
I'm gonna show you how I do that in just a second because it's a little bit easier than duplicating them a bunch. All I'm gonna do is hide them for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the t-shirt, the Winnie the Pooh, and this cutout all by themselves. And I'll show you what that looks like on the Make It screen really quick. So you have your Winnie the Pooh, that's your black vinyl, then you have red vinyl, and then we have cardstock. You'll wanna cut this cardstock out in the same color that you're cutting your flowers. So let's say we cut all that out, and I'm just gonna show you this really quick because we'll go to the machine and cut everything out. Now what I wanna do is unhide my flowers, and then I'm gonna hide the three parts that I just cut, which would be the two pieces of vinyl and the outline of Winnie the Pooh for the cardstock, and we're left with our three flowers. I'm gonna click Make It, and I wanna make, I think, eight copies of each flower. So rather than hit sitting here and hitting Duplicate, which can actually make Design Space not work very well, I'm gonna go up to Project Copies, and I'm gonna say Eight Copies, and I'm going to wait for it to apply. Now you'll see that you have all of these pages with the different flowers on them. All you simply have to do now is just load your cardstock. I'm cutting this on a medium cardstock setting. Works great. Make sure that you're using a good quality sticky mat when doing this. I find that using a less sticky mat causes the flowers to rip a little bit easier when it's trying to cut them. Let's head over to the machine and get everything cut out. We're ready to cut out our vinyl. So just cut some Starcraft HD in black to put on my mat. When cutting adhesive vinyl, you cut with the color side up. And then I just want to get it on my mat. I did not do a very good job. There we go. Okay, make sure that is well held down. So this is going to be the outline portion of Winnie the Pooh. And I do want to just double check my blade because I did have it cut something a little funny. And it's a good thing I did. Do you see that piece of debris on there? That would have caused my vinyl to cut really bad. So I'm going to make sure to get that off. And you can always rub your blade down with a little bit of alcohol or you could also just uh, stab it through some aluminum foil. That will clean your blade, not sharpen it, but definitely clean it, because it does get a buildup of like adhesive gunk and paper gunk from being used. to do is to cut out our cardstock and I'm going to need four sheets and I'm using a color called pineapple bliss I ordered these from 143 vinyl should be a pretty good Winnie the Pooh color now what I want to do is I want to make sure that this the barcode is at the bottom of my sheet that way I just make sure that it doesn't actually cut it shouldn't even on top but I like to make sure that it's on the bottom now I am going to be using a couple little tools here to make this a a little faster and b make sure that they cut really well so I'm going to use a, I'm going to be using a brayer to help hold this down. So what I'm going to do is I want to run the brayer over the entire sheet of cardstock. And that's just going to make sure that it's held on really well. And the other thing that I'm going to do is run two mats. So while this mat is cutting, I'm going to be loading this mat. Then I can load it, unload this mat. It's going to go a little bit quicker. Even though it's only four sheets, this can take a little while. I'm cutting this on the medium cardstock setting and the other thing that I want to make sure that you guys do is that you make sure your blade is clean like I did for the vinyl. I already checked it. There's nothing on it but you just want to make sure that you have a clean blade so you want to check it periodically. last one I just want to show you how I remove them from the mat that way you guys can do it without damaging your flowers it's super duper easy all you're gonna do is take your mat and flip it upside down and then I want you to take your mat and kind of roll it back and you'll see that your flower automatically starts to kind of pop off from the rolling then I just use my hand to hold it down any parts of the flower that don't come off you can use your finger to kind of help them come off and you see how easy this goes now you want to be careful with rolling your mat because you can crack them so you don't want to like roll them completely flat but you do just roll it off of your design here and easy as that your flowers now they are usually stuck into the cardstock a little bit not because they didn't cut just because that's what they do 
I'm gonna put my plastic back on and I'll pull these out really quick so you can see. They're not really stuck in there, they're just sort of in there because of the way like the petals hold. So you just sort of gently kind of work your way around and just loosen it out of there. And then you have your flowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of them off the cardstock and then we're gonna show you how to roll them. So I'm gonna be using this curling helper. This thing is great, it's called a curling coach. I will link it down below. Comes with some tools and then this little people-shaped thing to help you measure and to curl it really straight. So what you do is put your tool in the bottom here with the hole and you can see it kind of spins on that. And then you wanna take your flower and you wanna put the end into the little slot on your curling tool here. And then all you simply do is curl your flower. Now you're going to want to keep your flower tight to the base of this. So I'm going to turn it to the side so you can see that a little bit. But I'm keeping it tight to the base of the little person. And as I'm turning it, you'll see that it's going to stay nice and straight on that base. So that's important that you keep it straight. Now you'll see that it is pretty tight right now. But don't worry, we will loosen it up a little bit before we glue it together. Now, you're just gonna go as long as you can with this little base, and you may be able to finish the whole flower this way. I don't always end up doing that. I will sometimes pop it off the base and then just use my hands, but it's really up to you and what works best for the way you roll. But you can see I'm just rolling the flower with my hand, and then I have him pressed against the little base. And sometimes your flower might get stuck around the base, so just kind of pull it out again and then just keep rolling until you get pretty much to the end. You can see I've only got a few more petals to go. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my tool out, drop my little guy, and then you see that I have it in my hand. So what I'm gonna do is pinch it between my two fingers and roll the rest of the flower just like this so that it's pinched between my two fingers until I get to the end with this little tab. This tab, I like to fold it back and forth once, and then I pinch this between my fingers and then I just let go a little bit and you'll see that it kind of puffs up a little more. So you have a little bit bigger of a flower. Now you can do that and make it as loose or as tight as you want. It's really up to you. There's no right or wrong way to make them like tightness. And then I put some hot glue and this might not be quite hot enough yet, but we'll see if we can get enough out to kind of glue this together. And I just sort of spread it all around the base. And then I want to fold that little, the base part open or like down on it. Now here's the thing, your base is probably gonna be larger than your flower. That's typical, it's okay. Sometimes you won't see it, like on this one we're really not gonna notice it, but if you do see it, you can always just trim it off with some scissors, which I show you in the video where I show you how to like size your flowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull some of these petals out just a little. I don't do anything like too crazy with them. I don't like to have like a lot of fluff on mine, I just do like a little like edge fluffing. And then I think we're pretty good on that flower. Now we are going to cut out that, we are gonna use the Winnie the Pooh base, which I didn't show cutting, cause I cut that separately, but we're gonna lay these flowers out as we curl them onto that base. So I'll put that over here and then we're gonna be all set to glue it down. I like to lay them out first and then glue. I've laid out all of the flowers on the Winnie the Pooh. Now we may need to add a few um, depending on where things kind of sit. But what I like to do is I'm gonna open up my uh, shadow box. I'm using a nine by nine uh, frame from Michaels. And then all I did was I cut the like glitter cardstock to fit inside that frame. Now these frames have a little spacer in them and I like to use the little spacer and set it on my paper that I'm using or depending on if I'm just gonna keep the frame as is, I will just glue the backing paper to the little back here that's like a canvas material. And because our Winnie the Pooh is gonna be a little heavy, I'm gonna glue that down because if I don't, it might bow a little bit and we don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna take some glue and I just like to start at the top and I just put like a line of glue. You don't have to use a ton, um, but you do need to use, you know, a bit. 
to kind of get it to stick down. Then I turn it over so I can kind of reach it better and I want to line it up best I can with the top and the sides and not dropping it, but I did drop it, but that's okay, it's fine. And I just wanna line it up best I can with the top and the sides. I'm gonna let that top section dry a little bit before I lift, because I'm just gonna put some more glue and I'm just gonna kind of dab, dabble the glue all under this cardstock. That way it's gonna hold nice and tight to the back and not bow out with the weight of the Winnie the Pooh. Once that top's dried a little bit, I will just come in and I do some glue globs just kind of everywhere. And you can just do this pretty quickly. It doesn't have to be perfect. But you just want to make sure you get some glue kind of everywhere. And I've got a newer stick in here that's just not quite hot yet, so it's going to be a little hard to get all the glue out. But there we go. That should be good. And all I want to do is lay this down and then you can just press on it. Just be careful. It is a little bit warm, but it's not like super hot, but it will be warm on your hands. Just want to press it down to get it kind of flat, kind of flatten out some of that glue. And then I'm going to let this dry for just a few minutes. Now, once that's dry, I'm going to take the flowers off of the poo and I'm just going to slide them over. They're generally laid out, but I, I'll relay them out here in a few minutes. Now what I want to do is get this kind of centered in the, um, the sheet here. But I will say these are kind of bowed, so they don't always sit super flat on your desk. So I'm just going to kind of get him centered. I'm just going to eyeball it. And you do want to make sure that he's facing the correct way based on what your vinyl looks like. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to just throw some glue on him. Again, you want to make sure he's pretty well glued down. So I'm just putting glue kind of on all his pieces, parts. And then you want to confidently set him down in the center. So I'm just going to confidently set him down in the center. And then again, you just want to press him down a little bit, especially into the glitter. And then I do need to put a little glue here because I see that that glue did not stay um, wet enough. So I'm just going to put a little dab of glue under his ear and I'm going to glue that down. Because you want to make sure all those pieces and parts are glued down so that they don't get um, stuck or they don't come up when you put the flowers on them because they can. So that's important that you get this pretty well held down with glue. I've got lots of little glue spidery webs everywhere. But this is so far coming together. So now what we'll need to do is to put all of our flowers onto our Winnie the Pooh. So for this, you can lay them out individually and play with them and figure out how you want them all laid out and then glue them down. Or you can just chance it and kind of move them as you feel fit. I like to lay mine out because there's only certain ones that will fit in certain spots because they are kind of awkward. Um, so you just take your time. Now keep in mind he has a t-shirt so we don't need to put flowers directly under his t-shirt which is so helpful. So you can kind of just fit your florals and you're going to have some gapping and that's okay. It's fine. It's because of the way he's going to look that gapping is completely absolutely fine. And don't worry because we will come in and maybe add some more flowers once we put the vinyl on. So I'm just going through and kind of filling in his spots kind of wherever I think flower will go and as I fill him in you'll start to see him come together. Now again keeping in mind I don't need to fill in that center portion of him right here just some of it because you remember this teacher has like a v-neck and then his arms so we do still need to fill some in but we don't need to go too crazy with it. We don't need to get every single inch of him covered with a flower. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to place my flowers in and I'm just kind of figuring out where I think everything looks good. And like I said, it's okay if you have a little like flower overlap, if you have anything like that. Now his arms come down and his little um, v-neck comes down. So that's why I have like a flower in the center kind of like that. But I think that looks pretty good. He looks pretty Winnie the Pooh shaped. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up each flower glue and stick it to him and this is the part that's going to take a little while but don't worry just take your time again i'm just putting a dab of glue and then i'm sticking it right to that cardstock that cardstock just helped us line these up to make sure that we've got a nice neat looking winnie the pooh 
So now I'm going to go ahead and finish gluing all of his little flowers down and then we will go ahead and place him into our shadow box and I'll show you how we line up the vinyl. dry for just a minute we may need to add some um, because like I said when you lay them out sometimes you kind of can squeeze them in a little bit better when you have them glued down so if we need to add a couple that's totally fine we can cut some more no big deal there's no real way to know exactly how many you're gonna fit just because as you sort of place them you can kind of squeeze them in so he's pretty dry so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of some of these little hot glue strings here there's they're everywhere always and I'm gonna pull those out just so I can get a good quality look here. All right, I'm gonna flip this in and I'm gonna place it into our shadow box. And it might be a little tight just because of the, um, the paper might be a little too big, so you just might need to press it down a little bit. But once it's in, there we go. All right, that looks good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close these so that they don't scratch my desk because they will scratch your desk. So I'm gonna close the little um, tabs just so that they're down. And now we can put the Winnie the Pooh on to our um, shadow box. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I wanna layer his shirt over him, but I can actually do that once he's on to our box. So it's really up to you and the way you wanna place it. I don't, it doesn't matter. You can layer his shirt first or you can layer it after. I'm gonna scooch the glue, cut glue under the way. I'm using a medium tack from 143 Vinyl, and I'm just gonna lay him down onto the vinyl, and then I'm gonna cut it out. Just gonna cut this real quick. And I'm gonna cut this little piece off. This will be perfect to use for his shirt. Set that over on his shirt. Just like so. Now you're gonna want a squeegee for this. And I do recommend using a nice rubber squeegee, especially on this one, not plastic, because the plastic's gonna be really harsh against the glass. Now for this part, I'm gonna go ahead and take poo off of the backing, which I can just simply peel off. It should come off pretty easy. And I'm gonna use parchment paper on this just to help I want to help line him up and I do need to get this pretty close to me and then I need to stand directly over it. So with parchment paper it allows the vinyl to not stick while you layer it down while you kind of get everything lined up. Now I will say it's really hard for me to see so we're gonna have to skip that one and we're just gonna have to go for it. Sometimes you just have to go for it but what's nice is I have a little extra transfer tape. Oh no! And I can simply kind of get him to stay on to the edges of the um, frame. So I can kind of hold him up over the frame and move him around. And I'm gonna, you're probably going to see the top of my head for this because I need to get directly on top so that I can make sure that when he's seen that those flowers line up with all of his pieces parts, which it looks a little off. So I'm going to move him a little bit over. Like I said, you're gonna, it's not going to be perfect. That's kind of the point of it. He's gonna be a little more of an organic shape, but you wanna get him lined up pretty well. And I wanna make sure like his ears are good. I think that's pretty good, let's hope. Oh, I think that's good, okay. So then all I wanna do is I'm gonna burnish him down, but that's why you go from the like right above it, because if I'm looking at it from the side right now, it looks super off, but it's not. It's pretty close to where it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. Okay, so you guys can see it a lot better, with not so much with the lights. But he's lined up really, really well. Um, but to me, from this angle, he looks terrible. <laughs> and that's why I say, when you do these, make sure you go right above them in order to line them up. Now I'm going to put his t-shirt on, and we're going to look at him from a couple angles, mostly from like straight on, so that we can make sure 
that everything, the, like the flowers are covering all the parts that we need them to. And that's why I say when you do this, you want to make sure you're doing this from right above it when you're placing that on. And then I'm going to turn him sideways so that I can see him and see if we need to add any additional flowers. Because from here I see that I should, but when I turn him and I look at him, direct. I do see two places that he needs some flowers. He needs some right here and then some up here. So I think he'll be good when I add actually just one more flower, which I can probably just use one that I made previously. So I'm going to go ahead and open these and I always like hate these things. I either break a nail or I scratch my finger. So I'm just going to do it like that. And let me tell you, squeegee, multi-use tool. Great for that. So let me pull him back out, which is not always easy because you did have to kind of push him in. So you may need to push him out a little bit from the inside. All right, I just need to add a flower right here. And I'm not sure if any of the ones that I cut previously are gonna fit, they're not. So we'll have to cut another flower or I have one I didn't roll. Perfect. All right, let me get this flower rolled. I think it'll fit fine in here. I'm gonna make it a little bit wider and then we'll be all finished. Here is the finished shadow box. It came out so, so cute. I'm trying not to get too much of a glare on it for you, which is pretty hard while still having it pretty well lit so that you can see everything. But I think it came out really, really cute. Like I said, it's never gonna be 100% perfectly lined up, but that's kind of the way that it's supposed to look. So just judging by, you're gonna get some glare because I'm gonna move it a little bit, but you can see like it's pretty well lined up if you're looking at it at exactly this angle. But that's kind of the beauty of it is that it really can be looked at from several different angles and still look really, really cute. But again, I'm sorry about the glare. This was a really fun project to do, really, really fun, really easy, and I think that anybody can do this. So I do think this would be a great introduction to paper flowers if you're somebody who is starting to learn how to roll them and lay them out this is a pretty fun one to do if you have any questions by all means please let me know in those comments down below i'm always happy to answer any questions that you have and if you've ever rolled paper flowers let me know down below as well i would love to hear more about it i hope you all have a wonderful day and as always happy crafting